So he says here, I need to try to hurry, I guess. But he says here, all these blessings shall come on thee and overtake thee if you will hearken unto the voice of the Lord your God. Look at verse 3. Blessed shalt thou be in the city, and blessed shalt thou be in the field. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, that's your children, okay, and the fruit of your ground, in other words, whatever you own, and the fruit of your cattle. He said, well, I don't own cattle. Well, get with the program. <laughs> go, go get some cattle. Amen. Okay. He said, the increase of thy kind, K-I-N-E, which means oxen, basically. Okay. If you want an ox. Okay. If you don't, you shouldn't have married him. Anyway. <laughs> hope y'all can see I enjoy what I do. And I, so, I, have, I have a good time with it. Whether you do or not, I'm sorry if you don't. But so, Now, but he also says, and the flocks of thy sheep. So there, you need to get some flocks. Amen. Blessed shall be thy basket and thy store. Blessed shalt thou be when you come in and blessed shall you be when you go out. Now, technically speaking, bless going in and bless coming out has to do with warfare. It actually has to do with warfare. It's not just going out and being blessed out there and being blessed when you come back in. That, yeah, that goes too. But you'll notice here the next verse. The Lord shall cause thine enemies. Why? Because you're going to be blessed going out and coming in. That's, that is a reference to warfare all through the Old Testament. Going out and coming in is a reference to warfare. That's why at one point Moses said, I can no more go out and come in. What he's saying is, I, I can't go to battle anymore. So Joshua, you're going to have to take over and go to battle. And that's whenever he put Joshua in charge of the armies. And so here he says, the Lord shall cause your enemies. And this is what's going to happen when you go out to battle and you come back in. See, if you go out to battle and you come back in, that's good. Isn't that right? <laughs> it's not good when you go out to battle and you don't come back. Right? That's not, that's not good. Okay? So... But he said, when you go out and you come back in, he said, you're going to be blessed when you go out and you come back in, right? Then he said, the Lord shall cause thine enemies that rise up against thee to be smitten before thy face. They shall come out against thee one way, as one, we could say, and flee before thee seven ways. So they're going to be scattered, Uh amen? The Lord, verse 8, the Lord shall command the blessing. Notice the Lord shall command the blessing. Now, the word of your testimony is you can repeat that blessing. You can repeat it and say it. But but if the Lord hadn't commanded it, it wouldn't do you any good to really repeat it. But he has already commanded it. Why? Because he has already blessed you with every, all spiritual blessing in heavenly places, Ephesians 1, 3 says. So all of this has already been established. You got that? Now, all you need to do is know about it so you can decide to believe it, which is the key to receiving anything from God. Okay. And he says, the Lord shall command the blessing upon thee in thy storehouses and in all that you set your hand unto. And he shall bless you in the land which the Lord thy God gives you. The Lord shall establish thee a holy people unto himself as he has sworn unto thee, if you shall keep the commandments of the Lord thy God, which is what? Love God, love your neighbor, exactly, and walk in his ways, and all the people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of thee. Now, that word afraid literally means to revere. It can go back to the idea of actually being afraid if necessary. Okay? But he says, And the Lord shall make you plenteous in goods, in the fruit of your body, and in the fruit of your cattle. And in the fruit of your ground, in the land which the Lord swore unto your fathers to give unto you. Now, notice who our fathers are. Our fathers are the fathers of the faith. Why? Because our generation only goes back to Jesus. Isn't that right? So, now notice in verse 12. The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure. All this stuff, he's already said, you're going to be blessed with this and this and this. And it's going to be overflowing. You're going to be plenteous. And then he says, and then God's going to open up his good stuff. 
See, God's, God's got a history of letting things kind of come to you naturally and then throwing in his stuff, okay? Do I need to remind you about a certain wedding in Cana yeah. where they had all the natural wine, but when Jesus made it, it was the good stuff. Yeah. Isn't that right? That reminds me of the other day, this uh, policeman had pulled over a preacher and uh, when he walked up the window, the preacher wrote down the window and he said, uh, yes, officer, can I help you? And the officer, whew, he said, you, you been drinking? He said, no, sir. He said, no, I've been drinking. And he noticed his little thermos over in his head. He goes, well, what's in that? And he, so he, he said, let me, let me see that. So he handed it to me over. He goes, what is this, communion wine? He said, no, it's just water. He said, what, what do you mean? He said, no, this is wine. He goes, what do you know? He's done it again. <laughs> Don't try to use that. Okay? <laughs> so, anyway, all right. So he says here, okay. Now watch this. Here, here's where it starts. Now watch. He says he's going to open the good treasure, okay? The heaven to give the rain unto your land in his season and to bless all the work of your hand. Now watch this. Here's going to be the result. And you shall lend unto many nations, and you shall not borrow. Amen. That's a promise that's waiting to be fulfilled. Amen. Do you get that? Now, now watch this. He says, and the Lord shall make thee the head and not the tail. Amen. And you will be above only, and you will not be beneath. If that you hearken unto the commandments of the Lord thy God, which is what? Love God, love your neighbor, which I command thee this day to observe and to do. Don't just know them. You got to do them. Yep. Okay. And thou shalt not go aside from any of the words which I command thee this day to the right hand or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Then finally, you go all the way down. That's verse 14 in Deuteronomy 28, 15. It says this, but if or no, it says, it shall come to pass, no if there, but it shall come to pass if thou will not hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, if you don't love God and you don't love your neighbor, okay, to observe to do all these commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now, notice as we said before, that Jesus took the curse. But now notice what he's saying here is this, if you don't follow the command to love God and love your neighbor as yourself, you're not going to see the blessing of God. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. So one of the reasons he blesses you is so that you can love God and love your neighbor. How do you love your neighbor? Well, first off, how do you love God? Keep his commandments. Yeah. How do you love your neighbor? Well, you love your neighbor, what does he say? To do unto them as you would have done unto you. So when you see the hungry, yeah. what do you, do you do? Oh, Lord, bless them. No, no, no. See, you've observed, but you hadn't done. So what do you do? You have to do. You do what? Feed them. Isn't that right? Clothe the naked. Visit the, the, the widow and the, and the orphan. These are the things that how we live our life. And notice, the reason you can bless them is because the Lord has opened his good treasure to you. Amen. You say, well, I'm not really seeing that overflow. Well, it's probably because you got it. You know, the, 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 the spigot is jammed full with what you should have given away. Does that make sense? I'm going to write that down. I didn't, that's, I don't have a pen. I'll write that down because I'm, I'm not, I, I had never heard that until just now. Oh, you got me a pen. I'll take it. I will take it. Thank you, ma'am. Yes, so, yeah. I'll just make me a note. Spigot. There we go. Okay. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, here we go. You can have it back. Ooh, almost. Sorry. That's why I'm a preacher and not a ball player. Okay. Yeah. 